taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Patrick Mackay The Devil's Disciple Patrick Mackay was born in 1952, in London, to a father who was an aggressive and violent drunk. Harry Mackay, a veteran of World War II, was an unsuccessful accountant who came home every night to his wife, the worse for wear. He would then accuse her of things she had not done and a severe beating would follow. As time progressed, he would start to vent his anger on his son, Patrick. Alcoholism and a faulty heart killed Harry Mackay when Patrick was 10, but even though his father had been abusive, the boy found it difficult to come to terms with the loss of his father. He had not been allowed to see his body or go to the funeral and began to believe that his father was still alive, although it was probably more of a hope. He felt bad now that it happened, having wished his father dead many times over the years. His mother suffered a nervous breakdown around this time and was hospitalized for four months. With his father gone and his mother in hospital, young Patrick felt abandoned. Around this time his personality began to change and he had his first brush with the law, accused of stealing from a neighbor's house. He also became a bully at school and was subject to tantrums and fits of extreme anger. He was a loner, a liar, and a troublemaker, an outsider with no friends and was often dirty and neglected. These weren't his only issues however, he was also cruel reportedly setting the family tortoise on fire on one occasion. Another depraved act he was supposed to have carried out, was pinning birds to the road in order to watch cars drive over them. Like his father, alcohol became a crutch which made him violent, and he began drinking at an early age. He mugged people on the street and burgled old people's homes for the beer money. Once, just for kicks. Patrick set fire to a Catholic church. When he had been growing up, his father had told him many gruesome stories about the war, describing colleagues being blown up and shot. Partly due to these tales, Patrick had developed an unhealthy interest in death, spending a lot of time dissecting the bodies of dead birds and animals, most of them he had killed himself. It soon became obvious that there was something seriously wrong with Patrick torturing and dissecting local wildlife was only part of the issue, so his mother sent him to various homes for boys with problems. She eventually brought him home again, against the advice of the psychiatrist who had been observing him. She then bitterly decided to relocate the family to Guyana in South America, but before too long they were back living in London. After being fired from his job for his persistent bullying of other staff members, Patrick was said to be unraveling dangerously and a probation officer warned of dire consequences, if he was not removed from the family home. His prediction was proved to be correct when Patrick tried to strangle his mother and commit suicide. Patrick's response to questions from investigating officers was that he lived with his father and saw snakes. However, following an examination to judge whether he was mentally ill or not, he was released without charge. Shortly after the incident, Patrick tried to kill a young boy, but was fortunately restrained. Soon Patrick Mackay was incarcerated in what would be the first of a series of psychiatric facilities, one doctor described him as, a cold psychopathic killer. In 1968 he was sent to Moss Side Hospital in Liverpool one of the few institutions in Britain that had the required security to keep a man like Patrick McKay, out of harm's way. While there, he underwent numerous tests and examinations which were fairly inconclusive, apart from the opinion of one psychiatrist who thought he had inherited a genetic defect from his father, which made him likely to be psychopathic. His troubled relationship with his mother did not help and it was no coincidence, they felt that many of his violent fits occurred around her. It should also be considered the learned behavior he had taken from his father in regards to his mother. Seeing the violent actions of his father, may have normalized the aggression in some way, especially in regards to her. The medical professionals suggested that Mackay suffered from intermittent explosive disorder, 
a condition characterized by explosions of uncontrollable anger. He was, they concluded, very disturbed. It was also noted that he was also very immature, and would take a doll to bed with him every night that had to be kissed. His behavior was extreme and one doctor was convinced he could be a murderer of women. He was a psychopath but without the mania that sometimes accompanies the condition. An independent tribunal examining Patrick Mackay found nothing wrong with him however, and he was released several times in spite of the fears about his violent tendencies. He also became obsessed with the Nazis. Mackay idolized Adolf Hitler, even fashioning a Nazi uniform for himself and purchasing a pair of stormtrooper boots. He began to have delusions that he was powerful and that one day he would change the world. Like other serial killers, such as the Moore's murderer, Ian Brady, he believed that he was superior to other people. In 1972, Mackay was released from Moss Side. He was 20 years old and about to unleash his own form of hell. He tried to make an honest living, but found it impossible to hold down a job. Eventually, he moved in with some people he knew in London, starting to drink heavily and consume large quantities of drugs, not the best thing for someone with his particular history. As could be predicted, Mackay proved difficult to live with because of his mood swings and aggression. He did not want to live with his mother because she was constantly nagging him about paying his way, and other family members soon showed him the door after one sight of a temper tantrum. Meanwhile, his interest in the Nazis persisted and a photograph of Hitler's right-hand man, Heinrich Himmler, sat proudly by his bedside. One afternoon, as Mackay walked in some woods near to his mother's home in Kent, he found a Carmelite convent that housed eight nuns who looked after elderly patients. Next door to the convent lived 64-year-old priest, Father Anthony Crean. Father Crean bumped into Mackay that day and offered to buy him a drink in the local pub. He thought that Mackay looked like he needed a friendship. The two men then became unlikely friends and began meeting for a drink in the pub regularly. Patrick Mackay however, could not resist his impulses, and he broke into the priest's house to steal a check for £30. Mackay was arrested for the crime, but Father Crean was reluctant to press charges. The police decided to proceed with the case anyway and Mackay was ordered to repay the money. He never did however, and had even altered the amount on the check he stole to £80 instead of 30 Patrick Mackay then headed back to London and left Father Crean seriously out of pocket. Mackay continued to drift from job to job and was convicted of various petty crimes, spending some time in jail. His behavior was still violent and some commentators speculate that by this time, late 1973, he had possibly killed five people. Later in confirmation, he admitted to drowning a homeless person in the Thames, but he is also suspected of other killings. In February of 1974, Mackay tried to kill himself and was picked up by the police. After being examined by a psychiatrist and deemed not to be mentally ill, he was observed on a ward for a while before being released on the 14th of February. From there he headed for the home of 84-year-old Isabella Griffiths, whom he had helped to carry her groceries back to her home in Chelsea not long before. After he knocked on the door, Mrs. Griffiths told him she did not require any help that day and Mackay became angry bursting into the house anyway and strangling her in a rage. He then proceeded to take his anger out on her with a 12-inch kitchen knife, mutilating her body before having something to eat and listening to the radio in her living room. He later claimed that he now thought about killing himself with a knife but decided against it. Mackay then arranged Isabella's body, closing her eyes and covering her before putting dishes in the sink along with her shoes and turning on the taps. He left the house having stolen only a cigarette lighter, tossing the knife he had used to kill her into some bushes. It would be two weeks before she was found. But the police found no clues and the case remained unsolved.
McCodden became the unwanted lodger of a social worker who was ordered to take him in. He would discuss endlessly the violent fantasies he had and suggested that he might even be possessed. Eventually, to the social worker's great relief, Mackay moved on. Patrick Mackay was now living rough, abandoned by his family who wanted nothing to do with him. He then robbed the social worker's house and went to prison for four months. By the time he was released, he was angrier than ever and determined to take revenge on the society that had let him down so badly. He began by mugging women and then formed a plan to rob well-off elderly women. He had enjoyed killing Isabella Griffith. It had given him a sense of power and he wanted to experience that feeling again. On the 10th of March, 1975, Mackay knocked on the door of 89-year-old Adele Price, strangling her after she opened it. The euphoric feeling it gave him stayed with him for several days. After killing her, he took a nap on her sofa but was awakened by the sound of someone trying to get into the house. It was Mrs. Price's granddaughter. She went off to phone her grandmother from a phone in the hall and Mackay ran out past her. However, there were other flats in the building and the daughter assumed he had come from one of them. Once again it was a motiveless crime that left police stumped, and again Mackay tried to end it all and was locked up in a psychiatric hospital. Upon his release, some friends taunted him about his friendship with Father Crane, jokingly suggesting that it had been a homosexual relationship. It put the priest back into Mackay's mind and he set off for Ken to find him. He had decided that the only way to stop this kind of scurrilous talk about him, was to kill Father Crane. Mackay traveled from London with two knives on his person, first visiting his mother and telling her to cook a chicken he had brought with him, then he strolled over to the convent. He said later that he found Father Crane's front door ajar and he walked in and called out his name. Seeing him and being afraid, Green attempted to escape but was stopped by Mackay. There was a struggle and Mackay became angry. He punched the priest in the face but Father Crane broke free, running towards the bathroom, presumably to lock himself in. Mackay caught him before he got there, pushing him backwards into the bath while beating him with his fists. He took out one of the knives and stabbed the priest in the neck and the side of the head. He then found an axe which he swung at his head, stating later that, it was something in me that just exploded. The blows of the axe rained down upon the priest and his skull was split open, his body now stretched out in the bathtub. Mackay then put the plug in and turned on the taps. In total, it took an hour for the priest to die, at one point Mackay touched his exposed brain with his fingers, an action that he later claimed to find very erotic. After his despicable crime, Mackay left Father Crean's house and went back to his mother's to eat the chicken she had cooked for him. However, when Father Crean's body was discovered later that night, it did not take the police long to work out who had killed him. Patrick Mackay was arrested and confessed to the murder within 30 minutes. Initially, Mackay confessed to three murders, but in prison he began to boast of others and was questioned again. This time he admitted to 11 murders, committed during a two-year period. He had stabbed a woman on a train, bludgeoned three elderly people in their homes, and stabbed a woman and her grandson. One man had been thrown in the river, and another man had been beaten to death as he closed his shop for the night. Another medical assessment confirmed what the others had found, Mikhai was a psychopath who felt no remorse for his crimes. He was judged to be sane enough for trial, as he knew exactly what he was doing. On the 21st of November, 1975, Patrick Mackay stood trial for three counts of murder. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter with diminished responsibility. For his crimes, Patrick Mackay was sentenced to life imprisonment.